In this video, I'd like to describe a technique for the management of soft cataracts that is similar but probably much safer than performing the hydroprolapse technique, which is a time tested technique. Let's look at some background. In soft cataracts, many surgeons prefer to hydroprolapse the lens into the anterior chamber to remove it with predominantly vacuum and very short bursts of minimal phaco power. This is of course safe to the endothelium. However, this requires a CCC size of 5.5 millimeters or more. And if you end up with a 5 mm CCC or less, there is a small but definite risk of getting a posterior capsular blow. And even if you get one such case, you would be definitely wary about performing hydroprolapse. Also imagine getting the entire crystalline lens with endonucleus, epinucleus, cortex and all with an anteroposterior width, the pole to pole width of 4 to 4.5 millimeters into the 2.5 mm AC. There is bound to be contact with the endothelium. And if the endothelium is compromised just for argument's sake as in a Fuchs endothelial dystrophy or otherwise, there is definitely a risk. Although one applies very minimal or no phaco power at all. I have been performing a modification of the hydroprolapse technique which works well and once you see it you will feel that it probably could be safer than the hydroprolapse and it is not difficult to achieve or accomplish. Let's move on to the video. In order to demonstrate this technique let's take a soft cataract. This patient had just a great one or even less nucleus carotid cataract. So I'm going to attempt to perform a CCC using a curved shank titanium utrata forceps. And it's important that you gently rest the forceps against the posterior lip of the cornea and do not press it too much in order to discourage the egress of viscoelastic from within the eye. So perform the capsular rexis by taking hold of the tone flap and moving it either in a tangential or a centripetal fashion. And if you see that the rexis is tending to run out, do not hesitate to come out and Reinsufflate the anterior chamber with sufficient viscoelastic to deepen it before proceeding with the capsular rexis. So in this particular case, I got a capsular rexis size that was slightly bigger than 5 mm and it was also a little eccentric in the inferior portion. I'm attempting cortical cleavage hydrodissection. See what happens. So while I perform cortical cleavage hydrodissection, the inferior pole of the nucleus actually pops out. And since I do not believe in hydroprolapse, I'm actually repositing this nucleus back into the bag. And I perform hydrodelineation. The completion of hydrodelineation is marked by the appearance of a golden ring. And even though this ring is not very distinct because of the ruffled up cortex and epinucleus above it, the hydrodelineation would definitely have occurred in this case, even though it's not very apparent. Now, the next step of the procedure is you take the phaco probe with a power of just 20% and a vacuum of 300 millimeters of mercury. You have to uncap the epinucleus and the cortex overlying the central small endonucleus core. And as you do this, you will see that the endonucleus is clearly delineated. There's just about two to three millimeters of soft endonucleus that is present. And the hydrodelineation has been successful because as I said, the presence of a golden ring always deems that the hydrodelineation has been successful fully completed and you can see with minimal phaco power I've got this nucleus out and that's all there is to it with respect to nucleus management. The epinucleus of course can be removed with epinucleus setting using no power at all just using vacuum and probably just very short bursts of power. The removal of epinucleus is no great challenge as the epinucleus is freely rotating because of a good cortical cleavage hydrodissection. So imagine a scenario where you have to pop out the entire lens with the cortex and the epinucleus into the anterior chamber and stuff the entire anterior chamber with this bulky material. And even though you do apply very little phaco power, there's still a chance that the endothelium can be compromised because of the contact of uh, epinucleus and other matter against the endothelium. Cortical aspiration is easy because of a good cortical cleavage hydrodissection and once the bag has been completely cleaned up, the procedure is concluded with the implantation of intraocular lens. The carry-on message is you don't really have to hydroprolapse the entire lens, even in a soft cataract, because in soft cataract, it is almost always possible to get a good hydrodelineation. All you have to do is after you create the hydrodelineation, you have to uncap the epinucleus and cortex overlying the soft endonucleus 
core which is seldom more than 2 to 3 millimeters and this core alone can be popped up and removed and the nucleus can be successfully conquered. I thank you for your attention.